Please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Jess Sinha, the head institutional research uh, at, uh, head at uh, MK Global Financial Services, is with us. They have their MK Confluence, uh, you know, that is underway. In fact, 100 companies and over 450 investors will be participating over two days. Uh, that begins today, rather. Uh, Dhananjay, good morning. We were discussing the, uh, you know, the contours of the Confluence yesterday with your entire team. Uh, but I wanted to talk about a couple of stocks that you'll have as your top picks. Uh, not getting into the specifics, but names like Ashok Leyland feature as your top picks. Wanted to know what you've made of the kind of guidance that has been raised by the commercial vehicle and the tractor industry in the quarter gone by. Are you still very optimistic on some of these names? So I think in the auto space, we are generally optimistic. Uh, I think the focus is largely on the uh, the rural play, which we have been uh, sort of uh, highlighting for the last one and a half, two years. I think that is panning out. I think if you rec uh, uh, if you uh, if you notice, I think there has been a sort of a momentum that we have seen uh, that is building up in, as far as the two wheelers segment is concerned. Whereas uh, tractors have been uh, uh, has been has been doing phenomenally well over the last two years. They have actually grown uh, in terms of volume by about uh, 20%. So that is something that remains. Uh, I think uh, the the, uh, the uh, commercial vehicle space has also been uh, seeing a good momentum over the last uh, uh, year or so. Uh, but I think more recently there are changes as far as uh, 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 overloading norms are concerned and other uh, you know axle norms are concerned all those things are there but these are the uh, these are factors which are actually turning us a little bit more positive on commercial vehicle stocks and uh, while we were positive on Ashok Leyland uh, we have uh, uh, post the result and some of these developments that have come up so accounting for that we have turned a little little cautious on Ashok Leyland so our focus is uh, significantly on two wheelers tractors and and passenger vehicles at this juncture Okay. Uh, good morning, Dhananjay. Uh, well, I was just saying, yeah, we, we know that MK does a great job of uh, rural stocks. Uh, and you all have, uh, you know, spoken about this theme before. But uh, before I come to that, uh, I wanted to ask, you know, there were right. some notes I saw from the MK strategy note that you worry interest rates could go even higher, that the 10-year GSEX fair value is actually 84 Right. Uh, well, that looks very sharp right. because we are still pretty right. south of 8. We are at 7.75. Right. Uh, how would you play it as a stock market investor? Would you still buy right. the banks, although you see these higher rates? So uh, we are firmly of the view that yields would be on the higher side. I think that comes from a fundamental view of the way we look at a cyclical upturn in, in credit demand. We were anticipating a 16% growth uh, uh, in, in bank credit growth. So I mean, uh, up from 5%, it has come, come up to almost like a uh, little less than 13%. We think that in the second half, you will actually see 16% um, growth, 15, 16% growth. We are seeing that uh, deposit growth is actually lagging behind somewhere around 8 or 9%. So the CD ratio is already up to almost like 50, uh, 76 percent, a little lesser than that, but close to the earlier highs of 78 percent that we saw in 2013. So we think that the liquidity scenario will actually uh, uh, sort of become tighter in the second half, and we will have uh, adequate, uh, good amount of supply of government papers because you remember that in the first half, government has actually lowered the government pro program, so uh, we're borrowing program. So second half, it will actually come up. So you'll have credit demand and also government borrowing being higher. All these things will, according to me, uh, move up the yields. And also we are having a view that uh, global rates will actually go up. So we are of the view that Fed will be on the on, on track of raising rates going forward, and that's the guidance they're giving. As far as the banking stocks are concerned, we think that cyclical upturn in the credit demand will imply uh, that uh, banks who have the growth capital and who are, who are positioned to grow in terms of their portfolio, they will continue to grow market share significantly. We are seeing that uh, in terms of very aggressive uh, capitalization uh, attempt by private lenders, um, uh, including the large uh, private banks such as uh, HDFC Bank, even I ICSI Bank has reasonably good um, good, uh, good capital. And some of the NBFCs also are, are, are gearing up uh, to build up a retail portfolio. And 
Many of them are focusing on MSME uh, portfolio as well. So I think that uh, that attempt to catch up on that uh, cyclical upturn is a very important thing. Uh, we believe that uh, within the NBFCs, we believe that you know rising rates uh, for NBFCs that are managing ALM mismatches, uh, borrowing, uh, having. Uh, uh, bor uh, borrowing at uh, lower lower duration and and lending long duration that, that those are the sectors that will actually see margin pressure uh, um, so uh, so that is a, a broader frame of things that we are looking at as far as the bfsi space is concerned so we think that uh, consumer lending msme lending uh, uh, etc and working capital lending will be will be uh, are the opportunities that will arise as far as the banking sector is concerned within the psu banks you know uh, i think you still have we will have to grapple with the uh, with the uh, mark to market losses so if you look at the private banks they have actually upfronted the mark to market losses and there the sensitivity is much lesser but as far as the psu banks are concerned it is significant and it will pan out over the next four quarter uh, next three quarters so i think that those are the things that will be relevant from a psu bank space and we have already seen uh, that you know the government has actually uh, the uh, the 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 program that they are coming up with respect to the msm uh, psu banks uh, resurrection they are talking about additional capital requirement of uh, of of 1 lakh crores or plus uh, on top of the 2 2.1 lakh crores that they had announced earlier so i think the growth capital will be an issue for the uh, psu banks going forward Okay, so uh, growth uh, capital will be an issue for PSU banks. Let's see, I mean, SBI has uh, rallied about 20% over the last uh, few weeks. Ahead of its numbers, it's been looking very strong. Let's see how that shapes up. Uh, Dhananjay, what about uh, something like a Tata Motors? I mean, it is in your top picks list, but you know, this is a stock that has not delivered, that has actually tested the patience of investors for so long. Once again, JLR has been under pressure. You're still keeping the faith here? Right. So I think uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, the stock has actually been under a lot of pressure because of global factors such as Brexit, uh, you know, issues relating to tariff with respect to the U.S. geography. All these things are there. Um, in our view, is that uh, the there are triggers as far as the new launches are concerned. I think possibly some of these worries that are there uh, globally are are overstated. Uh, we think that there are new models that are that are that are going to pan out, and the volumes can actually volumes can actually surprise. I think in the price uh, uh, current market price, I think there is very little uh, value that has been. I mean, the the value for JLR is equivalent lesser than liquidation value. And, and the standalone uh, business is doing, uh, showing a good traction. So we think that at the current level, the stock is actually, uh, you know, is, is, trade, is trading at a very attractive valuation. So we think that there is a reasonable upside, a reasonably good upside, uh, if one has a horizon of one or one year or two years. So I think that's a value pick for us. Okay. Well, Dhananjay, uh, we will let you go and prepare for the conference and look forward with interest to what you are picking up in terms of key trends from that conference. Uh, we hope we will have you with us uh, sometime next week after the conference is done. Thank you very much for joining us and have a great conference out there today and tomorrow.